course. Okay, uh, going back to Dr. Baird, now would you kindly introduce the second speaker or second speakers? Yes, only about the earlier, I will not go into discussion, of course, just to, to refer to Nawal. I, I agree with Nawal and what she writes in Al Ahram and Al Masri Yom. I have no, I am not an Egyptian, so I have no other point of view than Nawal is pursuing there. And now, please, it's the time for Professor Hani Ali Said of Qasim University in Saudi Arabia and um, Mr. Ibrahim Said Fauzi of Fayoum University in, in Egypt to talk about the aesthetics of self-making and resistance in Nawal Sadawi's memoirs from the women's prison. And it is, uh, as I've been informed, uh, it's on the program. It's Mr. Ibrahim Said Fauzi, who is going to speak for both of you. And you know the time allotted to you. And please keep that. The floor is yours, Mr. Ibrahim Said Fauzi. OK. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. I want to share my, uh, my screen first. Go ahead. Um, I can share my screen while the other participant is sharing. Uh, Dr. Per has to close his. Yes. Uh, no, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hope it's gone now. Yes, it's gone. Yeah, yes, it's gone now. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I'm so excited uh, to be participating in this uh, prestigious uh, conference and I'm um, going to present uh, uh, my paper with uh, Professor Hani Ali Said entitled The Aesthetics of Self-Making and Resistance in Nawal Sadawi's Memoirs from the Women's Prison. Uh, first of all, I will begin. First of all, I will begin with an introduction to the uh, political uh, prison narratives. According to Yenawu, uh, political prison narratives constituted um, a, a distinct literary genre, and it appear, uh, political prison narratives appeared as a result of the end of uh, tyranny in a number of countries and the access to previously kept archives and the establishment of truth reconciliation commissions of course, the MENA region witnessed dictatorships, coups, uh, depressions, and revolutions, um, ending with the Arab Spring uprisings in 2011. So political prison narratives have a strong presence in the bulk of the Arabic prison, uh, 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 prison literature. Of course, uh, Simon Alevisku argues that uh, it started with the 90s. Uh, but Sabri Hafiz locates the genesis of political prison narratives to the uh, political, uh, the colonial prison novel, particularly Ihsan uh, Abdul Quddus's Fi uh, Baytina Rajul. But Radu Ashur considers uh, political prison narratives a, a rich uh, subgenre of modern Arabic literature and notes that they have been produced by both men and women, by liberals, communists, and Islamists who have recorded their prison experience in interviews, uh, oral testimonies, and fragments. Uh, but um, uh, Taligani uh, argues that Arabic prison literature generally is plagued by the perceived need on the part of authors to represent resistance to a political regime's oppression solely as a collective, coherent, and unwaveringly heroic act. Of course, uh, Arab political prisoners defied authorities attempts to paralyze creativity and portray the crisis of freedom in the Arab world. But uh, uh, female political prison narratives, of course, differ from uh, male political prison narratives due to the difference in both the content and the focus. Uh, when we look uh, at Cohen Moore's um, statement that uh, the question of whether Arab women authors write differently from their male counterparts has stimulated a great deal of critical discourse. Some critics argue that the elements of imaginative literature do not differ from gender to gender. What differs is the concerns of uh, 
each gender, resulting from their specific experiences and impressions of life and society. If Saadawi's memoir is compared to any male political prison memoir, we find no difference on the uh, aesthetic level, yet we find great differences in terms of experiences. We find no differences in uh, the aesthetic level concerning images and realistic elements. When we compare uh, uh, men's prison memoirs or men's prison narratives to women's prison narratives, we find that in women's prison narratives, the previous images are scarce and, and relations inside and outside prison walls are highlighted. Female prison narratives reflect women's position in, in patri uh, patriarchal societies. Women are double marginalized and are objectified, whether inside prison or outside it. And we find that the two factors that uh, shaping prison culture are relationships inside and outside prisons, as well as mm -hmm. the uh, communication. Barbara Owen postulates that <laughs> women's <laughs> prison. I, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, okay. Uh, Barbara Owen. Barbara Owen postulates that women's prison culture is a network of meanings and relationships whose function is to help female prisoners survive the morbid uh, conditions of prison. The shared pain uh, transcends the individual experience. So women wrote to give voice to the voiceless um, uh, woman, women. Of course, I will skip this slide as Dr. Pearl and uh, uh, Professor Omnia has fully covered uh, this uh, biography about Noel Sadawi. Very good. Very yes. Good. Okay, when we come to talk about the characteristics of political prison memoirs, we find that they are characterized by a documentary style. Of course, the pattern, the, the structural pattern, they uh, began with the moment of arrest or the moment preceding it or the first uh, night at prison. Then we, uh, the introduction, uh, the interrogation, then the uh, period of, uh, of incarceration, then release and the period of incarceration is my concern in this uh, paper. El Sadawi's memoir highlights friendship, mental uh, triumphs, happiness, and tactics of survival. And these themes are the most common themes in political uh, prison memoirs. El Sadawi's memoir, El Sadawi's memoir is a classical political prison memoir. It has the tripartite uh, structure, uh, the tripartite plot, uh, the moment, uh, the arrest, uh, interrogation, um, uh, uh, detention and release. The literary techniques used in uh, political prison memoirs uh, are um, irony, uh, metaphors, flashbacks in order to uh, move back and forward in time. Symbolism, of course, is of course uh, used. Um, the, the relationship between jailers and inmates are highlighted. Uh, and the dignity and spiritual life of uh, the uh, inmates are also um, uh, highlighted. When we look at this uh, quotation from Noel Sadawi's memoirs from women uh, prison, we find that she decided to live as if she was not going to leave again. Ironically, she found herself free under duress. She says, I don't know the secret of, the, of this happiness, which came over me all of a sudden. The memoir includes various physical and mental survival tactics. Obviously, in the midst of extreme suffering under duress, El Sadawi crafted her aesthetic uh, profile. And the aesthetics she and her cellmates produced in their life behind prison walls to survive. El Sadawi attempted to write her memoirs with aesthetics in mind to get out of psychological traumatic zones. Of course, Noel Sadawi was aware that the sudden change to the way of life and the customs that one was uh, not accustomed to made imprisonment totally difficult. So she was aware of the dangers of losing control of her sanity inside the absurd carceral system and understood that she did not have to approach life inside prison in accordance with the roles of the institution itself. So she constructed personal mental hygiene by adapting the prison to her daily routine. She got up early, 
she did morning exercises, she had a cold shower that refreshed her. Of course, this, this takes us to uh, Irving Goffman's uh, definition of total institution. He defines total institutions as a place of residence and work where a large number of like situated individuals cut off from wider society for an appreciable period of time. And he adds, a total, the total character of total institutions is a barrier to social intercourse and the barriers to departure that's often built right into the physical plan such as locked doors and uh, high walls. So Noel Sadawi surpassed these uh, walls. <clears throat> when we look at this quotation, uh, we find that it, it uh, asserts government's argument that the handling of many human uh, needs by the bureaucratic organization of whole blocks of, pe of uh, people is a key fact of total institution. El Sadawi's consciousness, uh, I guess, uh, I, I remember that the, uh, Professor Omnia mentioned this, she, uh, El Sadawi's uh, consciousness is an important thing that searched for a sense of self able to cope with the harrowing conditions in prison. So she deconstructed uh, Goffman's th theory since uh, life inside, outside prison, uh, uh, life outside prison as total institution brought here inside uh, prison. <clears throat> Of course, this takes us to the major implication of the bureaucratic management of large blocks of people as a staff and mate relationship. In this quotation, we find, we can see clearly how she differentiate between those who, the inmates and the jailers, how she present each of them. Um, the jailers are, are um, she bores scorn on police officers, considering them the state's tools, the state's puppets. She mocked, uh, she mocked them and uh, describing them as the puppets that obeying uh, the puppets, obeying orders blindly. Of course, when we uh, come to resistance, we find that uh, all of us agree that writing is, uh, uh, is resistance in itself. Of course, El Sadawi narrates uh, that uh, the prison authorities rejected the request of pen and paper, claiming that it's easier to give her a pistol than pen and paper. She was, of course, shocked by this line from a farce. She states, I had not imagined that pen and paper could be more dangerous than pistols in the world of reality and facts. But secretly, she managed to write her diaries on toilet rolls and cigarette uh, papers. And she managed to smuggle them uh, using her uh, biological features, <clears throat> her female biological features, okay? Uh, when we move to the second uh, way of resistance or tactic mechanism of resistance, we find that the, the women's relationship uh, inside prison um, who dem demanded better conditions and, uh, and uh, tried to maintain their sanity in the confines of their narrow cells. Uh, Noel Sadawi used the imprisonment as a chance to pursue the feminist leadership. So she proudly demonstrated solidarity and identified with her outcast companions, as well as her fellow political prisoners during incarceration. El Sadawi preserved her own uh, dignity uh, and integrity. She describes the contentment, the merriment derived from establishing harmonious relationships uh, and solidarity among female prisoners female prisoners managed to press the prison authorities to meet their uh, demands. And we went to, when we talk about the body in pain as a site of resistance, in prison, the body becomes the prisoner's most precious uh, position, and it is the object, uh, the object and target of power and the prisoner's site of identity, thoughts, and dreams. Body is shaped and trained uh, to be docile. El Sadawi exercised her body as a resistance to the authorities' trials to define her. Uh, her body was her safe space. El Sadawi mixed exercise with political protest and denied the state's power over the body. 
She declared any organized group movement establishes a rhythm in the mind and body that resembles the pattern of revolution. When we look at this structure of torture uh, uh, defined by scary, uh, by scary, we find that it begins with physical pain hurts. The pain amplified within the person's body is also amplified outside it, and the object of the, uh, the objectified pain is denied as pain and as power. We find that this structure indicates why El Sadawi determined to narrate her experience in her own voice in order to seek freedom and just. Uh, her story must have been told and read. Uh, Irene Scarry, uh, uh, in her um, influential book, The Body in Pain, uh, argues that pain is language destructive and pain is doubt on the side of the tortured and it is, uh, pain is certainty on the, uh, 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 on the side of the tortured and it's doubt on the side, uh, on the side of uh, the torture. But when Bain finds a voice, it begins to tell a story. And we find that Nawal Sadawi uh, uh, gave her pain a voice. She told her story and she resisted even after her uh, release. We know that she declared that she will, uh, uh, she will be nominated for a 20, uh, 2005 uh, elections against President Al Hosni Mubarak in order to give uh, the uh, Egyptians the uh, the power to uh, to say that uh, here we are okay when we move to the uh, the political prison aesthetics uh, and when we uh, uh, i will read this slide taking into consideration that a prison is a place of residence it's surely marked by uh, quotidian practices ritual of communication and survival negotiations of power and desire in addition prison life in which prisoners um, uh, actions are inspired by shared sufferings, cultures, and coping mechanisms is uh, is not completely compatible with its characteristically harsh uh, disciplinary measures. Some prisoners, Argus, Janet Hart, choose to uh, aestheticize their incarceration experience as a strategy of survival, mechanism of resistance, and a means uh, to, get, to gain control and mobilize interest and faithfulness in the most terrible circumstances. Janet Hart in her canonical study of uh, political prison culture in post-war Greece uh, proposes the anthropological concept of political prison aesthetic, uh, which is actually the outcome of previous theories of aesthetics. Of course, these aesthetics uh, included uh, singing, especially after taking a shower um, after a long time, since she has been incarcerated. Of course, the aesthetic pleasure she gained from the uh, beautiful voice of the uh, curlew and her daily exercise that we have previously mentioned, mentioned the, uh, the sense of humor um, that she and her cellmates usually shared stories and moments of merriment and uh, ecstasy. To conclude, the female voice has carved out public spaces for women in the Middle East and North Africa and has contributed to the social and political change and progress. Writing for El Sadawi was a means of resistance that helped her gain her agency and drove herself as an active agent in the society through putting her touch in the field of political prison memoirs. El Sadawi uh, offered various means of resistance to the state violence justified by uh, uh, the claim that women were not allowed to access the political real. Uh, Elena Sura Dimitriou argues that physical and psychological survival is of central significance to political prisoners. According to Hart, for the subaltern, opportunities to transform tight spaces into aesthetic uh, productions to, to a, a size thus become chances to, uh, um, to uh, reinforce, to uh, give strength and survival. El Sadawi's memoir from the women's prison highlights dignity, the force of will, aesthetics of happiness, friendship, uh, self-making and, and small triumphs. Uh, this is uh, all and thank you so much, Dr. Per.
Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim Said Fauzi. Thank you. You kept your time very, very well. So we have uh, more than five, six minutes for questions. Is there any question? The floor is free. Yes. Well, I can only add myself then that, as a matter of fact, I was in prison for one month because of refusing uh, a repetition uh, military exercise uh, because of the complicated uh, business with uh, corruption and things like that. I'm not a complete pacifist, but uh, only this week or this month in prison showed that you are completely right in your your analysis that prison is prison, even if it's uh, for a short yes. time, even if it's not the toughest prison in the world, uh, you are enclosed and this triggers a lot of interesting things that you have, you have reported here. It was very interesting. Thanks. Okay. Well, questions? Okay. Any other questions? I, I just want to add, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I want to add that um, I took some some notes in here, and uh, some of the insights that you made uh, strike strike me as uh, very uh, profound, actually. And I would like to kind of uh, pose this question for all of us to contemplate, which is: Are there really differences in the way men and women? prisoners, as prisoners, describe their experience, whether there is a particular, if we don't know the author, uh, I mean, the name of the author or the gender of the author is not known to us, would we detect from the narrative the gender? I think that that's a, that's a really good question yes. to ask and contemplate. Uh, remember that, uh, and here I can... Uh, refer to my dear friend, Professor Francesca, uh, Francesca uh, Corral, to tell us, yeah, hi. You have also the famous prison memoir, prison memoir uh, by the famous uh, Italian uh, writer. Uh, oh, you can, okay. If you can you unmute it. Yes, Gramsci, Antonio Gramsci. Gramsci, yes. Gramsci. Yeah. He has, he's famous for this, the memoirs, the prison <clears throat> memoirs. And uh, I wonder if there is any way or something to consider for this lovely array of scholars around, and especially of the art familiar with Gramsci, to write something about Nawal Saadawi and Gramsci, you know, <laughs> prison memoirs, and whether we can detect some fundamental differences, or who can, con con can conclude that the human experience of prison is similar across gender and language and background. So this is just my comment. If anybody would like to uh, add, because I think I'm not uh, overtaking from my dear uh, friend, Dr. Pear as a chair, but I think that he has still a few minutes until we come to the next. I think there is somebody, I believe I see now Dua, is it? McAllister? Yeah, yes. 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 Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I did not see the first name. I have to be proper. My Dia. name is Deirdre, but nobody can pronounce that. So Dia is what I go by. Okay, um, Dia, okay. Yes, um, thank you very much for your talk and uh, I, um, a name did come to mind, and I, th I found your question absolutely fascinating. Um, if there are, um, is there a similarity to um, to what it's like to be in, in that level of a prison, the, 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 the suffering that, um, that Noel describes, and then the word, um, and also the comparison with Grams Gramsci. But the book that came to my mind was Man's Search for... Uh, sorry, Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Frankl. So, Which one, if you can see it again? I'm sorry. Victor Frankl. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, he was incarcerated in a number of concentration camps during World War II. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
had he only was able to get through it um, by re, by knowing that they could not take his bones from him, that they could not take his soul from him. And it's just the descriptions of that Noel gives in um, in her book really reminds me of a very similar, regardless of background, regardless of religion, uh, regardless of the horrors of the system, that the de the coping mechanism in the soul is very similar. Yes. And they're different genders. So I just wanted to make that comment. I find that quite fascinating. Thank okay, you. there are some fine, thanks a lot. Uh, some final words by Mr. Fauzi. Thank you. Can I add something? Short, please, yes. Okay, sure. Um, I was wondering whether uh, um, you could just include some uh, comments uh, while you were writing about um, uh, the the power of writing that Naval used. So you could use the link CISO. Uh, CISO. So uh, that would be so nice because uh, the power of writing and uh, how women could just use and uh, write their stories from their childhood since um, they have experienced it as lived experiences. So that that would be, you know, uh, so helpful and so powerful to support your idea about the power of writing and the pen that they, uh, the women writer uh, differentiated uh, the writing from men. Um, okay, so Mr. Fayed has, Fauzi has a fine word, please. I can't hear clearly. You have the final word. Okay. Um... I think uh, um, political. I think prison experience transcends uh, geographical his, uh, borders. Uh, even uh, uh, the uh, historic specificities. Uh, we've, uh, they, uh, there is much things in common between male prison experience and female prison experience. But of course, we can. We we must know that. Um, I think there is uh, some differences related to the biological features. Uh, when we look at uh, Nawal Sadawi, how she uh, made use of her biological features to smuggle uh, her, uh, her papers written in prison. Even when we go to Argentina, to Alicia Cosame, we find that she used, of course, her biological features in Steps and Water. She used her biological features to smuggle, to write. Uh, uh, usually uh, women use their, their uh, bodies as a safe space, as a space to, uh, to uh, surpass uh, the, the high walls of uh, prison. Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, men usually, um, I don't know, actually, I, I don't know the, uh, the, uh, the proper answer for this question, and I, I want to uh, search more and more, but it's uh, a, good, uh, a good feedback and a good uh, from uh, Professor Kamel. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank him for uh, well, this, uh, welcome. Uh, for this uh, point, uh, and I, I will search to uh, know if there is uh, actually uh, major uh, differences Okay, well, think about the uh, Gramsci, you Gramsci, know, the, okay. the, 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 yes, the prison memoirs. If, if you allow me, uh, doctor uh, and the chair, just one more thing, which is you, we can bring in Shahrazad here also. Yes. Yes, she was not yes. exactly in prison, but she yes. was a hostage. The discourse yes. of Shahrazad is a discourse of a hostage. Yes. And remember that discourse speech in this case means life and yes. silence means death. So think mm -hmm. about that. Think about the power of words in the ability of Shahrazad to continue. Yes. Uh, I don't want to take over from uh, the prerogatives of Dr. Pear, but I see uh, Professor Francesca, if you allow me to give her uh, you know, a chance to say something very quickly. But you are the highest chief, so you decide. Well, <laughs> okay, I might be the highest priest, but uh, <laughs> uh, but 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 you know you you're up there with me. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead.
So thank you very much. I will be very short because, of course, uh, I, I appreciate the comparison with Gramsci. It is extremely important because Gramsci spent a lot, long time of his life in prison. And yes, yes. That it is extremely interesting because he's not only writing sort of short stories for his kids because he had kids and he wanted to, to keep in touch, inter entertaining them, even if he was so far. Um, that, but he also was also writing about literature and criticism is many affected and influenced very much Italian intellectuals for many years uh, after his death. Um, I just want to say that, of course, I believe that there are important <laughs> differences between men and women in, play, in prison, uh, especially if we uh, consider that women at times they might uh, take their children with them and also because uh, they have physical problems uh, connected with their uh, condition. Uh, yeah. They don't have, and of course, these things are coming out in the in, in their writings. Uh, and uh, and I appreciate the paper of uh, uh, our uh, Ibrahim, right? Yes, yes, yes Ibrahim. Yeah. Yes, yes. I would like to uh, to tell him that among Italian Orientalists, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, um, there are many uh, many Orientalists uh, uh, who wrote about uh, women Arab women in, in literature in jail or men in jail. I will mention Professor Isabella Camera da Flitto, but also Pistone, who, who wrote uh, another important novel, uh, um, sorry, PhD uh, uh, thesis on this topic, and. Um, and then later, if you want to write me and I'll give you these titles, or you find it on, 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 the, on e, 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 uh, Arab Lit. Okay. Arab Lit is uh, an Italian journal online. Uh, on the, and the last thing, remember that we have great example because Don Quixote was in jail and also, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, um, um, uh, 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 Ariosto and also Ariosto, the famous Italian writer. Yes. I mean, and still yeah. in Italy, there are many people in prison who are writing and publishing. And I am in a committee uh, of, uh, but most are men. Women are writing less, but uh, yeah. that's all my comments. Thank, thank you, you very okay, much. Okay, thank you very much.